Hi, I'm Mindy Peters, the Solutions Manager at SPI, and in this video, I am going to show you how to set up a coupon for your paywall inside of Circle, and then we are going to use that coupon just to test your paywall's checkout so that you can be sure that everything is configured the way that you want it to be. I'll be taking you into the back end of Circle and show you how to set up that coupon, and then I will walk you through the process of purchasing your product and then take you into Stripe so you can look at the payment and see how it shows up in Stripe. And then we'll go back to the front end of Circle and just make sure that after making that purchase, I end up in the right spaces and space groups. Let's get started. So leaving off from the previous video where I walked you through how to set up your very first paywall inside of Circle, I am here in Circle's back end. I'm in the settings, which you get to in the upper right hand corner by clicking on the settings icon. And then in the left hand panel here, we are in paywalls. And we can see the paywall that I set up last time, uh, which is $174 every six months. So now I wanna test this paywall. I want to go through checkout, make a purchase, make sure everything happens as I expect it to happen. But I don't want to have to pay $174. Now, we'll be able to reverse the payment later, but still, just to make it a lot easier, we can set up a coupon. And by setting up a coupon, that also gives us the opportunity to practice how that works. So let's click on coupons, which is right underneath paywalls. So you can see a few coupons that I was playing with beforehand. I am going to set up a coupon that will take all except $1 off of the cost of my subscription. Now it's important to know that, so Stripe is who is processing our payments here. And Stripe always requires you when you're going through checkout, you have to pay at least $1 if you are going to capture credit card information in Stripe. And so if you set up a coupon code for testing purposes, you'll wanna take off all except at least $1. So my subscription is $174 every six months. I'm going to take off $173. And so when I go through checkout, it's going to cost me $1. So I will click on new coupon here. When you're setting up a new coupon code, it is important to make sure you're using a combination of letters and numbers that's not easily guessed. You know, so don't use things like, you know, the tagline for your business or maybe, you know, like at SPI, Pat is known for his love of back to the future. So we're not gonna use back to the future for our test coupon code, especially when you're doing these test coupon codes that take off almost all of the cost of your subscription, you don't want those to be guessed by someone who shouldn't be using them. And so I will just use a random set of numbers and letters here. True story, once I was with someone and we were making a rather large software purchase and he managed to guess their testing coupon code because it was too easy. So that's your caveat, you know, that's your warning to just, you know, make it not guessable, make it a little bit hard. Okay, so I've created my coupon code here and then you can see under coupon name, whatever you put here is going to show up in the Stripe receipt. So just make sure that it's an adequate description of what the coupon code is for. So for this coupon, I put for internal testing, but maybe if it is at your community launch, you could put community launch discount, just put an adequate description in there so that your customer knows what that coupon code was for and so that it'll remind you when you go back two years later and look at what are all these coupon codes from, you'll be able to tell why you created that coupon code at the time. Now we have our discount type and you have two options. You could do a fixed amount, which is what we're going to do with this test coupon code, or you could do a percentage discount. Percentage discounts are particularly great when you are creating a coupon code that's going to apply to all of your pricing plans. So if down the line you have more than one paywall set up, this would let you say like run a Black Friday discount and give everybody 20% off their um, subscription no matter which plan they chose. As opposed to if you put in a fixed amount, um, fixed amounts, you want to be careful when you apply a fixed amount to all of your pricing plans, maybe versus a single pricing plan, just because you could accidentally give a much larger discount off your cheapest paywall option than you might intend. 
So just choose between fixed amount and uh, percentage amount based on your own needs. I'm going to go with fixed amount and I'm putting in $173 because I want to pay for, I want to pay only $1 when I check out. So when I do that, I'll hit next. And here is where we set whether it applies to all the paywalls or only a specific paywall. I only have one paywall set up right now, but um, if I had multiple paywalls set up, I could choose to have it apply to only one of my paywalls. I'll hit next. So here we are in the usage tab, and it's important that we get the duration setting right based on what we intend for our coupon code. We have three options here, forever, once, and repeating. So forever applies to subscriptions, and you can also use it on one-time payments, but forever basically means any time that this subscription is going to make a charge, we're going to apply this coupon code if they've added it um, at, the, at the time of checkout. Once means it only gets applied on their initial charge. So the very first payment they make, the coupon code will apply, but then it will not apply to subsequent charges. Repeating, let's choose repeating so you can see what happens here. We get number of months, and this lets us apply how long that repeating coupon code would last. So if I put in 12 months here, so my paywall that we are working with here charges every six months. So if my coupon code applies for 12 months, that essentially means it's going to apply to two payments. If it applied for 24 months, it would end up applying for four payments. So it's just important to make sure if you um, want your coupon code to stop after a certain point, make sure that you choose either once, in which case it would stop applying after the first payment, or choose repeating and then it will stop after the number of months that you set it for. I'm going to choose forever for this. Here we go. And then we've got some options here. So coupon redeemable from lets us set a future date at which the coupon code would start working. This is really great if you are working ahead and you think, you know, like, it's March right now and in June I am setting up for a big sale that I'm going to run in June. I want to set up my coupon code now, but I want to make sure that it doesn't work until that promotion in June, just in case, like I said, maybe somebody's trying to guess it and they guess what that coupon code is. It won't work for them because they're trying to apply it before the date at which it starts. So that's pretty cool. And then the same way we have redeemable until, and so we could make a cutoff date for our coupon code. So let's do that for this one because I'm doing a test here. I don't want this coupon code to be available forever. So I'm gonna set a date and I'm gonna say that this coupon is going to expire on Thursday. I'm recording this video on Tuesday and on Thursday it will stop working. So I will hit create coupon. So here I am at checkout and now under add promotion code I will add in the coupon code that I just created. There we go, I've applied my coupon code and you can see that now it's only gonna cost me $1 to check out. So I'm gonna enter my credit card information, I'll hit pay $1 and then we'll pick up the video from there. All right, so this is what I see after I complete my checkout. I'll hit continue. Now let me show you what that payment looks like in Stripe. So I went to stripe.com and I signed in and here is my Stripe dashboard. Now we are just running test payments now. We have just started working with this product so there's not a lot of activity here. But you can see that as you start to have sales you're going to see a bunch of different charts that will show up here. Now let me show you how to search for a transaction. Up in the search bar, you can put in an email address for a member of your community and look up their transactions. You can also go to payments and that will show you the payments beginning with the most recent payment and going back in time. You can look up customers. Again, you'll be looking people up either by name or by email address. We have a lot of different things. Just to protect any customer information here, I'm just going to put my own email address in the search bar here, and then we'll look at that transaction that just occurred. So here we are, we've searched for my email address, and we can see a few different things. So we can see that there's only one customer with that email address, which is as expected. 
I've had one invoice, essentially I've made one payment and we can see the one payment here. So there's a couple of different ways that we can look at the customer here. We could just click here. So I tend to like this view, the view of the customer where I can see all of the information about my customer. In an upcoming tutorial video, I will show you how to cancel subscriptions and refund payments. Let's go back to the Academy and we will check to make sure that after making the purchase, I ended up in the right spaces and space groups. And this takes me back into the Academy. Now, let's check and make sure that things happen the way that I intended. I should have been added into the Member Center and I see that I was, I was added into all of the spaces here. I also should have been added into the community space group and I can see I was added into all of the spaces here. So that was what I intended. So that's it for this video. I hope you'll subscribe to this channel. We've got a lot of great community focused content coming up. Tutorials like these ones, but also sort of bigger picture videos where we're talking about strategies, tips, tactics for running online communities. If you're looking for more free resources about community building, go to smartpassiveincome.com and under learn, click on community.